Hi booktube, it's Lindsay and Winnie again, of course, she's here. Um, I'm here today to talk about the books I read in May. Um, I read quite a few books, um, more than I expected to read because I had like, kind of like a rocky month with um, things going on and um, my time was diverted a bit from reading but somehow I just managed to finish um, a lot of books. Um, I read 32 books in total and so I thought I'd go over the, the statistics um, for this month. And like I mentioned last month, I decided to break uh, my nonfiction category into like their own parts. And so just saying nonfiction because I read quite a bit of nonfiction as you um, see, see on my videos. And so I thought it needed um, that further breakdown um, into like biography or history or science. Um, so yeah, uh, for fiction, I read one manga and or manga, I never know how to pronounce that. One manga and one comic. Uh, for children's books, I read six children's books, uh, three fiction, one fantasy, five mystery, and three classics. And then for nonfiction, I read two science books, uh, five history, four biography, and one nature book. So that's a grand total of 32. Yay me! There's like 31 days in May, and so somehow, like I said, I, I read more than I thought. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I will talk about the five, um, I picked out five favorites. Of this month and some like they managed to all be nonfiction I tend to prefer not I prefer I like both fiction and nonfiction but I feel like I get more out of nonfiction if that makes sense like I feel like I mean I can learn a lot from fiction but um, I really enjoy like the learning process um, with nonfiction because it's like um, it's like a college class for me um, you know picking out a course to take basically you know whether it's history or science um, so yeah they all happen to be nonfiction which is which is weird because like, I'm not weird but um the last Few months of me uh, you know doing a top five favorites there's been a mixture of nonfiction and fiction but somehow this month it just what the books stood out to me were all uh, nonfiction. not that the fiction didn't but, but yeah <laughs> um the first book is maybe you should talk to someone by Lori Gottlieb and this has been a popular book that a lot of people have been mentioning I like the cover it's very um it fits the puts the mood of the story and this is a kind of a memoir of Lori and her path to becoming a therapist because she wasn't originally in that career path. She actually started out working on like these Hollywood TV shows. And so, you know, she could have made it easily made a career out of this, but um, she wanted more, more from life, more like interaction with people. So like she slowly um, found the path to becoming a therapist because after going from Hollywood, she decided to become a doctor to like work with people. But she found that um, she couldn't get the time like, she was seeing patients and it was like, you know, one if they wanted the other. You know, they want to get as many people as seen as possible. And so she wanted that. She wanted more time um, to get to know them and treat them. So that's what led her to being a therapist. But it's so it's that her, the story, the book includes her story. But it also talks about, you know, all of the different um, personality traits and all of the different like psychological disorders um, people can have. And her own personal experience helping um, different people um, with all sorts of of things going on in their lives and so it really helps you relate not only to her but to all these people that she vividly describes and um, so yeah it's a perfect book if you, if you like psychology or memoirs um, yeah this fits all those bills all across the board um, and then this next one is kind of going it was, it's a darker book in a way it's uh, Clover Adams A Gilded and Heartbreaking Life by Natalie Dijkstra and this is that cover and um, this is about Clover Adams and her husband, Henry Adams. Sorry, there's cat hair flying everywhere. Uh, Henry Adams. And Henry Adams is the grandson of John Quincy Adams and the great grandson of John Adams, the president. Both were president. And so, you know, she came from a very wealthy family. This is, um, she lived most of her life in the Gilded Age. And so, um, so yeah, she had wealth and abundance. She was rubbing elbows with people like um, Tecumseh Sherman, William Tecumseh Sherman, and um, who else does it mention? Um, Henry Adams, and uh, Henry Adams, Henry James, and H. H. Richardson. And her husband, um, his figure alone was um, he was very interesting because he implemented implemented I am a totally new style in teaching history because instead of like him asking questions to the students, you know, to, to um, as a way of teaching, he had them ask questions. And so that's what was like a new um, format of learning. And so, you know, we're still using that today. I think it's um, really um, helpful and, um, and used, used in universities. So yeah, um, but aside all these positives, she came from a family that was um, pretty dark. Um, There's a lot of like mental disorders, like um, there's like a possibility. It didn't like, of course people weren't diagnosed 
with these um, disorders because we didn't have that, I don't know, knowledge or, or back then. But, um, you know, this writer looking back, you know, suspects, uh, suspects that um, like a lot of her family was like bipolar, suffering from severe depression. And then Henry Adams, his family also, um, there's a lot of um, struggles, even though, you know, they were well-known family, um, a lot of his um, brothers and sisters and then the, um, the uh, brothers and sisters of John Quincy Adams, most of them didn't make it um, later in life. You know, they died relatively young, um, which, you know, I don't, when I read history books, I, I never even, like, thought about, um, you know, the success of other people in that family. Because you just assume, like, with all these, like, famous people, well-known names, you just assume that, you know, everything is hunky-dory, but, you know, of course it isn't. Um, because they've made it so such a prominent um, place for themselves. But yeah, so anyway, it's a dark book and, um, but yeah, it, it really stuck with me. So that's why I decided to go with this one. And then speaking of dark, uh, this other one <laughs> that I'm uh, mentioning in my favorites is John Hersey's Hiroshima. And um, it's weird saying it's a favorite because it's it's so dark. But I, again, it's the same with the other one. It's it's really gonna stick in my, my mind. When I think of Hiroshima, I'm immediately gonna associate it with John Hersey, which seems to be, um, he seems to be like pretty well known for this book. And um, I had just um, mentioned on my Friday Reads picking up a biography of him. I think it was called Mr. Straight Arrow because he wasn't just, he just didn't write one book. He does have uh, many others. And so um, maybe reading this biography, I'll uh, find other books that I want to read because it's really well done. It's um, this book, he takes Hiroshima, Hiroshima instead of talking about it, like in the broad scope of things, you know, this is what happened, you know, steps one, two, and three, he um, instead takes it from the perspective of like five or six people in the town, all different walks of life, you know, different stations and um, different places in the city. And then how they, how, what they're doing like the day before and then the day of and like future um, what happened. So it, it gives you a really good feel um, and the sadness of, um, of like just the devastation of the city. Um, so if you want to read a book about Hiroshima, I can't recommend this book highly enough. And then um, for a lighter subject, oh, one second, I've cat, I'm petting this cat and so my tablet's just getting covered in cat hair. It's just flying everywhere. <laughs> um, this book uh, is The Curious Naturalist, Nature's Everyday Mis uh, Mysteries by Cy Montgomery with a black bear on the cover. And this one is like all like, like little like newspaper clippings almost of different creatures that uh, Cy Montgomery encounters in her backyard. And so I really liked it because she was so like cheerful and upbeat even on things that we do not like. You know, we want to kill immediately like spiders or mosquitoes or like um, beetles, all sorts of things that, you know, we just like, you know, no, you know, we don't want anything to do with them. She actually takes time um, to observe them. And um, she also brings in anecdote, um, anecdotes from uh, different people who are writing in to her newspaper who are emailing her telling about um you know with her experience with flies for example and then they talk about you know their experience with them like people who actually you know take the time to observe them so yeah it was really interesting and it made me want to just go outside with like a a um oh i'm blanking on the, oh my gosh <laughs> magnifying glass yes i want to say microscope but that's, that's not the one magnifying glass and just like look at you know this piece of dirt and see you know the ants and and all the whatnot like the earthworms and stuff that are crawling because I just wanted to you know see what's going on that us humans don't always notice we just take for granted or don't even think about um, what's happening under our feet and she doesn't just talk about little little critter, critters she also talks about you know frogs and pigs and um, all sorts of animals and so if you're a nature lover um, yeah this this is a good one it's Simon Montgomery I feel like she she can never disappoint I've read several of her books and they've all been such a delight and this last one is a biography um, the Matriarch, uh, Barbara Bush, and the Making of an American Dynasty by Susan Page. And this is um, her and her stately red uh, outfit. And um, her white hair is actually um, talked about in the book because she has this like, um, I originally, when she started going gray or white hair, she uh, decided to dye it, you know, as it's common nowadays to do. And um, but the dye was like, um, it would like rub off on like, for example, a chair or a pillow, um, and so she had one experience where she was um, going to fly to to somewhere, and on the airplane she noticed like who went to the bathroom, and her like um, the dye was like running down her neck, 
And she said from that point on, she was like so embarrassed and like so irritated that I was hacking on a place where it was inconvenient to fix. And you know, she was with a bunch of people. Um, she was like, never again, I'm not gonna go through this hassle of um, dyeing my hair, you know, people can just, I'm fine with the white hair, and so everyone else will just have to be fine too. And that kind of shows her personality. Like, I, I picked this book, because um, I really like biographies, but this book, um, it really showcases her strong-willed personality. Even though she, um, after, not even after university, she didn't complete her degree, because she met um, George H.W. Bush um, while she was in college, but, um, so she decided to become like a stay-at-home mom. So even though that you know that's like can be looked down upon or like as a supportive role um, of a husband and you know the, that role of a mother, she still had very strong personality, and she was like, if you don't like it, then that's just too bad. That kind of um, that kind of uh, personality. Um, so yeah, this one, um, yeah, it was really really readable, and it's a longer um, book, but um, but yeah, it's it's well worth your time. And this one just came out on April second of this year. So yeah, those are my uh, top five favorites of this month. Uh, let me know if you've read any of these books or um, what are some of your favorite books from the month of May. I'm hoping to have a, um, as good of a month in June. I'm right now, last night and this morning, I'm working on um, fixing up my June TBR and for the summer because the summer is always uh, so fun to look forward to and making those uh, like summer read books or, you know, light, light fiction books, um, which are just so great for summer. Um, so yeah, thanks. See you soon, book two.